Hello, I'm Carly McAvoy. I want to talk about the different formats or the different forms you can put your answer when you're graphing an inequality. We already looked at how what these would be. This one right here, because we have a solid circle, would be greater than or equal to, and we look at this number. I'm going to use x for all of these. So x is greater than or equal to 3. That's the inequality. And you should be able to go through and write the inequality for all of these answers. What's the inequality for this one? Well, we don't have a shaded circle, and it's less than 5 because it's going to the left, so x is less than 5. For this one, we're also talking about less than because it's going to the left, but we have a shaded circle, so x is less than or equal to 1 half. I'm going fast on these because I've already done a video on this. And then the inequality here is greater than, um, and it's got an open circle, so we're saying x is greater than 0.7. So all of that should be something you already know. Set builder notation is just a way to write this in a more formal manner. So we would take this and we would say the set of all x, and that slash means such that x is greater than or equal to 3. That's called set builder notation. It's got that, those set symbols on either end like this, and then we say the set of all x such that x is less than 5. I want you to recognize that this same thing is in my set builder notation that I wrote as an inequality. This is just a more formal way to say the set of all x such that x is less than 5 or whatever it is you're saying. The set of all x such that. So we're saying all the x's that fit this description. So set builder down here, the set of all x such that x is less than or equal to 1 half. The set of all x such that x is greater than 0.7. Now let's talk about interval notation because interval notation is something you're going to use, especially for those of you that are going on to math 99 and, and higher maths, interval notation will become a part of your math life. So in interval notation, what we're interested in is what is our leftmost point and what is our rightmost point on our graph. Always left and then right. On this graph, the leftmost point, the one furthest to the left, is 3. And what's the rightmost point? Well, the rightmost point is infinity because we're going forever to the right and that's infinity. So we're going to infinity. And now what we have to do is put on either end of this either a parenthesis or a bracket. If you have a solid circle that is an, an equal to part, then you're going to have a bracket. And that bracket, remember, says that we're including 3 as part of our answer. If you have infinity, negative infinity or positive infinity, there is no last number. So you always have a parenthesis near that. So what this interval says, we're starting at 3, we're including 3, and we're going forever to the right. That's what the graph shows us, too. This is another way to state that. So for this one, we always are talking about what's happening on the left end and then what's happening on the right end. The left end of this is going forever to the left. So for us on this one, we have negative infinity on the left and we're stopping at 5. So that's going to be 5. But the question is, do we include 5? Does it have the equal to part? No. So that's going to be a parenthesis. And infinity, I just said, no matter which one, is always a parenthesis. It's never a bracket. So that would be the interval notation for that one. See if you can write the interval notation for the next, next two, and then pause or whatever, and then come back and see if you did it correctly. And this one, we're going forever to the left, so that's negative infinity, and we're ending at 1 half. Remember, left and then right. If you put 1 half and then negative infinity, it doesn't make sense. An interval is supposed to show us what it would look like on the graph. And of course, 1 half would be to the right of negative infinity on a graph. This is always going to be parentheses because it always is with infinity. And one half, because we have the shaded two part, is going to be a bracket. So it's going to look like that. So when we do that now, as you move forward out of 
math 94 and into 97 and 99, if I was going to graph that, instead of having a closed circle, I might see it this way, a bracket shaded to the right. That way it matches my interval notation with the bracket or the parentheses. If that was the case, what would this one look like? Well, in, in the new format, we would use a parentheses or a bracket. That is, we still have five. We're going to the left, but instead of an open circle, we use a parentheses and then shade to the left. Parentheses means no equal to part, and an equal to part has a bracket. So for the last one, the interval is um, starting at 0.7 on the left and going to the right to infinity. Infinity is always a parentheses. But what's 0.7 in this case? Also a parentheses because there's no equal to part. If I wanted to graph this using my interval notation type of thing, I would start at 0.7. And this is telling me start at 0.7 and go forever to the right. But what's the symbol here? Well, there's no equal to part. I know that because it's rounded. So that would be a parentheses heading to the right. So we can start to replace open circles with parentheses and shaded circles with brackets. Okay, let's solve two equations that I thought were hard enough to look at a little bit and uh, before we move out of here, two inequalities, I should say, just to make sure that you know how to do these. 5 times 4 is 20x. I'll do it over here. 20x plus 15 is greater than, I'm distributing negative 10, distributing plus 3x. If I subtract 3x from both sides, remember when you're solving inequalities, really good idea to keep your, error, your variable on the left side. It makes it easier to graph. Now I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides, get 17x is greater than negative 25, and divide both sides by 17. Would I flip the arrow here? Well, you only reverse the direction of the arrow if you multiply or divide by a negative, which I did not. I, mul I divided by a positive. So I'm not flipping it, but I do get a negative answer. This is the inequality. Set builder notation would be the set of all x such that x is greater than negative 25 over 17. Sometimes they ask for an inequality. Sometimes they ask for the set builder notation and sometimes they ask for interval notation. So you have to know which is which. We are, uh, sometimes it's easier also to graph it first. I'm going to graph it using either a parentheses or a bracket, but I know my number is negative 25 seventeenths. I am headed to the right, I can see because it's greater than. I don't have an equal to part, so I have a parentheses opening to the right and going that way forever. There's my graph. Now, my interval then, on the very furthest left, I have negative 25 over 17. And on the furthest to the right, well, I'm heading to the right, which is infinity. I don't have an equal to part, so it's going to be rounded. And it's infinity, so it's always rounded. All infinities always have the parentheses at the end. OK. And number two, I put in there because it has fractions and everybody likes to see practice on that. So the least common denominator in this inequality is 8. If you look at all our different denominators. So I would multiply everything times 8. This is my method, or not just my method. I mean, I definitely did not come up with this method. But this is my method of choice. And I find that students do better using this method. So that's what I use it. Here I can see that 4 goes into 8 twice, so I get 2y. 4 goes into 8 twice, so I get 2 times 3, or 6. 4 goes into 8 twice, 2 times 3 is 6y. And the 8's cancel, giving me 1. So there's my equation. All I had to do was multiply by the LCD. And the least common denominator in this case was 8. So I multiplied everything by 8. And then I'm going to move things to the, my y's to the left. Subtracting 6y, I get negative 4y. And subtracting 6, I get negative 7. And now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4. Am I going to reverse the direction of the arrow here? 
I am because I divided by a negative. So that's going to be less than or equal to 7 fourths. And then I'm going to give that in, that's inequality. Set builder notation, the set of all y, because y is my variable, such that y is less than or equal to 7 fourths. Of course, if you're dealing with the y, you have a y there. And then interval notation in the graph. Well, the graph, we're talking about 7 fourths. And then you ask yourself, Am I going left or right? Well, y is less than, so we're definitely shading to the left. And then you ask yourself, do I have a parentheses or do I have a bracket? Well, you have a bracket because you have an equal to part. So your bracket opens to the left and shades forever that way. So our interval then, we are talking about what happens on the far left side. Far left is negative infinity, and on the right side is 7 fourths. Now, this is an infinity symbol, so it's rounded. This one is dot, got an equal to part right here, so it's a bracket. So this is our set builder notation, this is our interval notation, and this is our graph. This is e inequality. Okay, that's it. All the different forms. Have a fantastic night. We'll see you later.